All right, so here we are at the uh, Tesla supercharger here in uh, Kettleman City. It's a, it's a nice location. I was worried about not really getting here on time because, you know, the sun's going down much earlier, so it's a little bit difficult um, with uh, the shorter, you know, winter days. Of course, uh, nobody's really paying attention to the parking spots. I would have parked there too, uh, but I didn't want to take up any of the uh, Tesla charger installs just because, well, you know, they only have 40 of them. <laughs> but the the thing is, uh, I, I got iced next to the bathroom too because there are a bunch of uh, internal combustion engine vehicles over there next to the to the bathroom and services. But uh, yeah, all in all, it's a it's a nice location. It's right near the freeway. Um, lots of solar panels. Uh, nice finish compared to the building that was here before. Uh, but I need to go use the bathroom, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that, and then I'll come back and give a more thorough uh, review of the, the charging location. All right, so I already discovered the first thing I dislike about this location is uh, yeah, you actually need to have a um, entry code to use the bathrooms here. So basically they're restricting it to Tesla owners who are actively charging. So that kind of sucks. So if uh, you're like me and your fuel tank is full, and your battery doesn't need recharging, well, you're kind of stuck. Um, so that, that kind of sucks. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, the facilities look great if you actually have a Tesla. And uh, while I'm here, I'll kind of point that out. This is something that I've been thinking about for a very long time, is uh, why Tesla doesn't make adapters for other electric vehicles, especially now, because what you end up with is a perfect opportunity to build out your network even more. I, I think Tesla was misguided when they uh, when they said, oh, other manufacturers, uh, they could do a quid pro quo and you charge using our network. Well, um, the other manufacturers aren't your customer. Electric vehicle drivers are your customers. So uh, say this again, if, if Tesla made a CCS adapter um, for $1,000 and you know I would slap that down in a moment uh, for a CCS to uh, de uh, supercharger uh, format adapter. And even if they wanted to charge us uh, electrical rates like they do for um, the, the Model 3 owners who are going to be getting their Model 3s, uh, that's fine. I'll pay, I'll pay the electrical charge and I'll pay a sitting fee if it's like 10 cents a minute after 30 minutes or you know 25 cents a minute after 45 minutes or uh, 50 cents a minute after an hour. Uh, as so you make sure people aren't hogging the chargers uh, that's fine I'll pay it but make the adapter <laughs> you know because we're, we're your customers as much as uh, you know the other Tesla owners are so you know and again that's a thousand dollars a pop that would feed a lot of money into building out a supercharger network that everybody can use so again here here we have some Tesla's charging obviously they're nowhere near the capacity right now um, even though they do say right right now is a very high traffic time because of uh, I, I'm guessing everything leading up to uh, Thanksgiving weekend they're anticipating a huge amount of traffic uh, especially on Interstate 5 and I think part of the reason for that is um, you know everybody wants to travel Interstate 5 well for me um, I'm fine actually traveling, uh, you know, Highway 99 because it's actually a much uh, faster route um, than a, uh, you know, than night uh, than Interstate 5 when there's high amounts of traffic, especially in the southern portion, where what you end up with is a uh, a lot more lanes going north and south on Highway 99 than you have on Interstate 5. So, I mean, I took a detour to get over here, um, but what, what you end up with is a, uh, you know, what you end up with is a, uh, a slowdown for me. So my trip is going to take much longer because of this, whereas if you're sticking to high, uh, Interstate 5, um, it might have been faster, but, uh, but with this traffic, maybe not. All right, so one more thing that it looks like, and this is this is the sort of um, Tesla exclusivity, right? So even if you have a slow charging vehicle, right, this you have this uh, 
Clipper Creek, but it's with the, the Tesla adapter. So um, you'd need a J adapter to use this. And again, there's a disabled spot, but there's not really a uh, dedicated spot for other electric vehicles, right? So it's, it's definitely not a universal uh, charging location by any means. Um, and I mean, I do agree with this format, uh, you know, that having slower chargers and faster chargers available uh, for handicapped parking or disabled parking at the front makes a lot of sense. But the problem is, it, it really doesn't make sense if um, the chargers don't adapt to your vehicle. So I, I'm thinking of this more in line of eventually we'll have public charging locations that look very much like this. And and just like everything else, you know, you have a power wall in there and all of that. I'm sure this, this site has many, many power packs. But um, in order to get in, again, you uh, actually have to uh, own a Tesla. So this is in no way a stop for non-Tesla EV owners. Uh, it's, it's, you know, purely and simply for those who are in the Tesla ecosystem. So while it would be nice at some point to, you know, have a, have this for other electric vehicle owners right now, it's, it's just not in the cards. So that's unfortunate. So here, you know, nice stop, nice town, just, you know, and then of course, I actually see uh, Tesla owners having to go back and check their code just so they can get in. But uh, I'm not sure what this ramp route is, but it's sort of crazy. Anyway, they do have uh, ramps to get back in. You know, there are hotels and motels in the area. So if you're going to stop overnight, you can always fast charge and then get to your room and unload your stuff and then go back. But they have a huge amount of capacity to add more vehicles. So that's good. I guess anticipating the need for the Model 3 when it comes out. So... And, and you know, I guess I could have called and uh, <laughs> customer service at Tesla and said, hey, I'm a member of the press too. Uh, and then maybe they would have let me in, let me use some of the services. I mean, there are tables out here. You could use those if you wanted to dine outside. But yeah, uh, none of the services inside. And I mean, I, I guess I can kind of understand that from a control standpoint, but still it gives this nasty feeling that you don't want um tesla owners having to interact with the rabble you know and uh that's unfortunate so i i kind of feel like uh i'm the rabble <laughs> i'm a rabble without a cause rabble without a clue uh what the deuce all right no i'm just a rabble but uh yeah, well, no, no, I am the rabble, whatever. But yeah, so it, it's kind of unfortunate. I would have, I would have preferred that they actually implement things a little bit differently. Um, but you know, it is what it is. This is, this is Tesla's EV world, and we're all just sort of, you know, driving through it. <sighs> all right. Well, on to a charger that I know will accept me. Well. You're still beautiful to me, baby. Well, I decided it's going to be a long drive to Bakersfield. And so since I, I don't get to charge here and I don't get to use the services, I'm going to go someplace that accepts me for who I am. Apparently, it's a quick stop gasoline service station and Quiznos sub. Because, um, you know, frankly, I just need to use the bathroom. In a twist of irony, um, the mechanic stop across the station gave me a key to use the bathroom. Huh. Well, that was nice of them.